What's happening, everybody? It's Sean with Reactions to the Classics, and today we have a full album reaction to El Cielo by Dredge. This is brought to us by a friend, longtime supporter, and patron of the channel, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Always appreciate you. If you'd like to support us in any way, check out the Patreon link below. Let's dive into a little bit about this. I don't know anything about Dredge. This is going to be a new experience for me. They're an American rock band formed in 1993 in Los Gatos, California. It consists of vocalist Gavin Hayes, guitarist Mark Ingalls, bassist Drew Roulette, and drummer and pianist Dino Campanella. They established themselves in the indie scene with their 1998 release of the concept album Leap Motif which landed them a deal with Interscope Records. Dredge released El Cielo in 2002, Catch Without Arms in 2005, The Pariah, The Parrot, The Delusion, what a name, in 2009, and Chuckles and Mr. Squeezy in 2011. This album itself, as I said, was their second album, released in October of 2002, first major label debut on that Interscope record. Like their first album, Leap Motif, this is a concept album. The title can be translated to mean the sky or the heaven in Spanish and to mean peace and freedom of expression in dreams. And the influence for this is very interesting. One of their main influences on this was a painting by Salvador Dali entitled Dream Caused by the Flight of a Bee Around a Palm Granite a Second Before Awakening, which is also the acronym in the title Brushstroke DCBTFOA. B-A-A-P-O-S-B-A, -A -A -A. it's gonna be the first song, I'm not gonna repeat that acronym for you. Stands for one second instead of a second. The painting clearly influences many of the album's core themes and song titles. For example, in the painting, there's a long-legged elephant, an elephant in the Delta Waves is one of the songs. Also pictured in the painting is a woman lying in a canyon. The canyon behind her is the title of the last song on the album. It's further supported by the translation of Japanese words from the beginning of the canyon behind her. This album was inspired by a painting titled Dream Caused by the Flight of a Bee Around a Palm Granite One Second Before Awakening. It is recommended that you view this painting as you listen to El Cielo. It's as if one stimulus awakens other senses. In other words, it's about drawing music. So that's what's the translation of the Japanese spoken words when we get to that song, which will be a while. Band members have also quoted, been quoted as saying that this Dali painting symbolizes sleep paralysis, a literal representation of the condition from which Dowie's wife uh, actually suffered. The booklet with this album contains letters written by sufferers of sleeping disorders with descriptions of various experiences with or relating to sleep paralysis instead of the lyrics in here. When the band began writing material for this album, they secluded themselves in the deserts around Palm Desert. Majority of the album was recorded at Skywalker Ranch, the band used three producers, Ron St. Germain, Tim Palmer, and Jim Scott on the record, adding another layer of diversity to the album. All tracks are written by Dredge. Well, let's start this thing off with that brush stroke with all the letters out there. It's only 50 seconds, or 57 seconds long. So we're gonna go from that into Same Old Road. I don't have much on any of the research on any of these songs. I'm gonna have the lyrics up as always. There just wasn't anything out there. It's your first time watching. The music will not be in the video, but there will be a link below where you can watch the entire thing. Thanks again, Mark. Always appreciate you. Same old road, by far the most streams on Spotify, like four times as much as any other song. Enjoyed that one. Some interesting things sound like a record scratch in their soundscape. The song builds and goes in a lot of different directions. I really did enjoy that about it. The percussion on there, the, the constant, it was, was interesting too. It really drew you in. The, I, th I think really the lyrics on this album, I'm just going to go out on a whim. I may be wrong. We maybe get to the end of this and go, man, you don't know what you're talking about, but are going to be a little abstract at times since it's based a lot on this painting and, and sleep paralysis and those sorts of things. But, you know, here we go. Down that same old road again, empathy controls the wind that blows and tickles our skin, a memory, a regret, a hope, a stimulus. Recent it seems, we must push on, we must push on. Though we bleed, we must push on, we must push on. So going through some stuff, but you've got to continue to push on. And then that all you need is a modest house in a modest neighborhood, in a modest town where honest people dwell. And then he goes on about making you know the, the best soil, the best rain but we must push on, we must push on. And then he ends out with that, all you need is a modest house in a modest neighborhood where it almost has a different vocal treatment on it. So I did enjoy that one. Now we're gonna go on to the, 
The third song, although that first song was only 57 seconds long, we got, I'm going to say, Sanzen. Like I said, I don't have much on these songs, but we'll figure them out as they go. Sanzen, what a song. I really enjoyed that. Built in a lot of different areas. Just so much going on. The guitar work on this is top notch. Uh, Mark Ingalls on that, just top notch. The lyricism is great. You know, I don't know exactly, once again, you know, I can't even concentrate on this. It's overthought, anticipated. The pen ink is running dry. It's been thrown to paper and wasted. Creativity has been blocked and overtasted. Maybe in time I'll appreciate it, but then that course, it just sticks in your head. Hold on, hold on. We'll be with you soon. And then when he gets to that bridge, we get some vocal effect, longing for what has been lost, longing for what hasn't been obtained. It's a small cost. Forget the past, lost the future, only now remains but a really well constructed song that goes through a variance of building and then then uh, kind of pulling it back but really enjoyed that one now we're gonna go to the second of our four brush stroke tracks they're all instrumentals this one is new heart shadow and i'm just gonna let it roll right into the fifth track triangle wow nice tune there i'll start for the brush stroke new heart shadow i just talked about nice little showcase for dino on the drumming and the guitar work was nice then we go into this song, Triangle. I'll tell you what, these guys do not mail it in on production because there's so many things going on in every song. I'd have to stop it during it to comment on it because it's hard to remember it all when it's done with. It starts out with a nice pre-verse, which has something to do, I would imagine, with the sleep paralysis, sleep disorders. We were born into silence and let it all be. Lift your anchor and just float away, born into silence and let it be. Let it all be fortune and silence. What I like is it starts with the pre-verse and then it ends with the pre-verse. So a nice little bookend. And then all kinds of instrumentation stuff goes. Sometimes sometimes he's just in my left channel and in the left headphone, and then he, he's in both. But plead, the chorus, plead with nothing. Why don't we lecture about something? Protest the way we're passive today. And then talks about watch it explode while it's not impossible for flowers to bloom and grow next to grace. And babies are born in the same buildings where people go to pass away, pass away. I think the circle of life, flowers bloom and grow next to graves. People die in the same hospitals. People are born. And then we get into the bridge. We live like penguins in the desert. Why can't we live like tribes? But then Dredge comes in on the next bridge and they're all singing. So you kind of got this group, you know, speak singing to it. And then you go back to the pre-verse. So really enjoyed that one as well. Now we're already up to the sixth song. Sorry, but it's over. Another one with very interesting soundscape to it. You know, the last minute was basically almost like Gavin chanting almost over Mark's just fantastic guitar work. So that really worked for me. As far as for the song itself, I think it does have a lot to do with the sleep issues, especially at the start, distorted and complicated. I'm sorry, but it's over. Essential to awaken. How moving. Here we are. That's what it's all about. I'm sorry, but it's over. To love here and to love this. I'm finally breathing. Before you go, there's something more to say. Persistent resentment. I'm sorry, but it's over. Seduction for destruction. I'm finally breathing. To love this, to love all this, it's what it's all about all the way. Before you go, there's something more to say. That's all the lyrics. I didn't plan on reading them all to you, but they put that together in a nice little four-minute soundscape that's, that's very pleasing on the ears and keeps you interested the entire time, as does the rest of this record so far. And now we're up to another interesting song titled Convalescent. I mean, these guys are... Uh, are not mailing in the song titles for sure. Let's check it out. That was a powerful one there, Convalescent. Describing this this old man, this lonely old man at heart, resting gray hairs on his wrinkled arms and just talking about how he's kind of a shell of himself. And then you get into that powerful Gavin on that, on that maybe you've never seen it, maybe you've never been through it. It's the only way to understand it. The drumming on here by Dino is first rate. It's kind of a driving. The song doesn't go 100 miles an hour, right? But it has that drive to it, which... It, it kind of needs to for a subject matter like this. I think it's a, it's a good way to approach this. Unaware of his surroundings, youth it passed, swarming like wolves to a fresh kill. The scent attracts. He's just scared about dying. This has got the best lyricism on this album so far for me. And then he gets into that. Maybe you've never seen it. Then he gets into believe that, to think back, to realize that. Those sad days have come to an end. Where are those? Where they have all been gone. And then that maybe you've never seen it. So that one was was fantastic, man. Now we're going to get to another one of those brush stroke songs. We have brush stroke walk in the park, and we're just going to follow that up. It's a minute 40 instrumental with 18 people live in harmony. That's a difficult thing to, to attain. 18 people live in harmony. One of the things I've noticed on this album is they really work hard on their outros, right? Building almost a soundscape, almost a shoegaze 
type of influence, not quite as heavy on the guitars, but that sort of, of style going into that. And we'll talk real quick. I talked about it during the reaction, but if you're not watching the whole reaction, the brush stroke, walk in the park, totally different. Dino showcasing himself on the piano. I mean, he also plays the drums, but he's some strings in there, kind of a totally different thing, like a walk in the park with a more relaxing. Then you go right in this 18 people live in harmony, but it's really not about harmony. It's about the end of the arts, right? It starts out, the opera is over, singers have all gone home, seats are all empty. The kitchen is closed. It's the death of the arts, right? The sidewalks are sprayed down, blinds are pulled down. Wrecking ball is back. Um, quiet business vacancy. Rents are rising. Our lease is up. Culture is down, right? Culture is down because the arts are dying. Talking about the symphony being gone. Art is trying. Is art dead? Art is dying. Is it dead? Believe it. We need it to move on. And then he gets into the most powerful verse on here. A one-track mind is a one-way time. Let's go ahead and gentrify. We let art die with robot minds. They steal the brush and paint boundary lines. A stale kind of people will find walking in a single file line. I think it's time to finally rewind. Let's go ahead. We might as well. And so what he's saying there is, you know, without art, I mean, and art's not just painting. We're talking about Dali. Art is what we're listening to right now. Art is theater and music and and painting and all kinds of different things. And if we don't let our minds be stretched by those things and we just go with this single file information, which is what the world pushes us to with computers and the things that we're actually watching this on on YouTube, um, it, it, it's not a good thing, right? Because we don't think outside the boundary. So really like that one as well. Now we're going to Scissor Lock, the 10th track. Supposedly this song's about a person telling us how it feels to be sleep paralyzed telling us what they see, what they hear, what they feel, and how it became a part of their life. We'll see if that description is correct. Scissor Lock, that did a fantastic job of building the atmosphere of this song because it definitely is about sleep paralysis where they say that you're awake but you can't move and he just builds in that. And, and just the different ways, the vocal effects, and then you had this different voice, which I'm, I guess is probably Gavin, but they're, they're mixing up. It's kind of faded off in the distance. It almost has a anxiety ridden little underline to this this track like the way it's arranged yet not in a way that makes you feel totally uncomfortable but you can kind of feel what it would be like to be sleep paralyzed i think i'm awake rolling on my blanket i'm sinking into bed light around me beautiful washes of pulsating color buzzing white noise it sounds like 100 bees because you're just there man you cannot move and then what keeps just repeating i too once thought the radio played let's act like children while we sleep paralyzed, I guess pretending, just playing along. And Lou said, you control it. Body's asleep and your mind is awake. And then we just have all those voices in there. And also the instrumental, you know, build and the guitar work, once again, is good. I'm a broken record, so to speak, on this. But just a nicely done track. All of these so far, the production, there's not any... Uh, there's not any shortcuts taken on the production. Now we're up to track 11, brush stroke, the reprise. I said there was five, four of these. There's actually five if you count this one. It only has two lines. It can be divided into two parts. The first part's a 40 second alternate version of the song Same Old Road, hence the title reprise. The second is an extract from a song called Wind at the End, which was recorded by the band but not released on any studio album, EP, or DVD. This one's short, so we're going to run from this right into the 12th track of The Room. Of The Room. Let's rewind it back to the brush stroke, reprise or reprise. I always hear it say, said both ways, so whatever you prefer. We just get that here we go down that same old road again. The first really is like 42 seconds was that, that reprise of that song. But then you get into just some nice acoustic work, which I mentioned during it if you were watching. Gavin actually plays the acoustic in the mandolin form. So he got to showcase a little bit. And then we get into a song that I think more is just, of the room is just describing the room, right? And there's some some different things here. So the lyricism, eh. So it's going to be, at, at first I'm like, ah, this, this song's fine, but it's probably going to be one of my least favorites. But I'll tell you what, the star of this is the guitar work, Mark's guitar work. He almost goes from a heavy metal, just all in to this just infectious riff. And he alternates between those things. And Gavin's voice sounds fantastic on the night falls beneath candlelight. So enjoy that one. Now we're up to our last brush stroke. Brush stroke, an elephant in the delta waves. I talked about it in the beginning. It's a minute 47. There are vocalizations by Azam Ali. I don't know who that is, but that's what I found in the notes. And we'll go ahead and take that because it's only a minute 47 right into it only took a day. It only took a day. We'll rewind back to the brush stroke and elephant in the delta waves. More of an Indian type 
atmosphere there, almost a, not a chanting, but just an, an ongoing vocalization there. Uh, almost a sitar sound. It could have been an acoustic, could have been a mandolin, could have been all three. So that was fine. And it only took a day. I don't think there's much in it lyricism wise. I think it might be describing the painting in this one. But once again, just a well put together song. Gavin's vocals are fantastic. And, and you know, the, the star of this album for me in a lot of ways has been Mark Ingalls on the guitars. Uh, Dino Campanella on the drums is also fantastic on all of these. So it, it was a good tune. Now we're going to go. We got two tracks left of the two longest tracks on here. We have Woe Is Me. Woe Is Me. As you heard at the end, of, this one had a lot going on. We had the saxophone by Zach Hexum coming in all this. I mean, on, on track 15, didn't expect that. Definitely a throwback piece, and, and the very outro of it was something we haven't had before either. Introducing it's from 1944, really pushing it, I think, to this dolly of painting. There's really not a lot to the lyrics, you know, it, it's definitely more abstract lyrically, but once again, instrumentally, it hits, and Gavin's power on his vocals just sounds so nice. So, sonically, it's very pleasing. Not every song has to be, you know, this great written lyricism here you just can enjoy the song and that was one of those songs for me where i really enjoyed it now we're going to go to the final track you might be able to see below it's six minutes and 40 seconds on the canyon behind her and there is not a ton of lyrics to this so i expect this to be kind of like the last track and then it's really built on the the premise of the painting the canyon behind her really the the proverbial kitchen sink song right six minutes 40 seconds finishes off the 16 track album and they kind of have everything in there with the finishing off of 45 seconds of almost repeated just it's almost like a chant right but then there's all that shoegaze type of guitar work in there by mark but then it it, it pulls out of there and you've got other stuff going on here this is about the painting i'm not really going to go into the lyrics it's more of that that soundscape that environment i did enjoy it now we're gonna to get to my thoughts on the overall album. It's 16 tracks, 57 minutes. Now, five of those tracks are shorter instrumentals, but some of them clock in at almost two minutes. The first track obviously is only less than a minute long. I think to pick favorite tracks on here would almost be impossible. I might go with Sands In, and then I just don't know, maybe Scissor Lock, but it's really difficult to do because this is the first album I've heard in a long time that's a true album as a piece of art right and i know that's what they were going for i'm going to assume but the album in itself i don't know that you can pull out individual tracks and listen to them and go oh that's a great song i mean some of them are fine but it works much better as just an atmosphere to just sit down and listen to and spend an hour of your time kind of just getting taken in to this type of sound i really did enjoy it um on first listen i'm going to give it a 7.0 but I think that would go up. I don't think it'd go down. I think it would go up on repeated listens. Just something very unique that I appreciate that Mark brought to me. And the highlight on here for me is definitely Mark Ingalls' guitar. He can go from, as I mentioned during the whole reaction, he can go from almost a shoegaze type riff to just an infectious riff to almost heavy metal jamming in there. And I thought Gavin's voice, he does a lot of cool stuff with it. Dino's drums are great. Drew Roulette on the, on the bass, not a lot in here bass wise. I mean, it's, it's a very underlying instrument on the songs, but still does a nice job there. The production is fantastic. They didn't mail it in on any of these tracks. They spent a lot of time on production, engineering, and mixing. I really appreciate that. Guys, thanks everybody for joining me. Thanks again, Mark, for bringing it. Until next time, I will see you.